All right, uh, today we're putting a dock on the clock. Now this is a segment <laughs> where we uh, have a certain time to talk to a medical expert about some of the trending health talk topics that you care about. Indeed, and talk about an expert. Today we're talking to Dr. Lolita McDavid of UH Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital. Doctor, a lot going on in our world today. Of course, today we're thinking about the anniversary of 9-11. We've had all these natural disasters that have gone on uh, across the United States. How does a parent talk to their child about something like this? Well, you know, first, you need to know if your child really wants to talk about it, if they're interested in it. Very small children probably don't even know what's going on. But kids who are older will. Uh, you can't turn on any kind of media now without knowing what's going on with uh, Hurricane Irma and then Katia coming behind her and then Jose, or I think it's Jose, and then Katia. So it can be very scary. But what you want to do is you want to answer your children's questions directly. That's very important. Since if you are giving them an anxiety, because kids read you and they know if you're upset, they're going to be upset. Yeah. So try to be calm. Let them know that this is not anywhere near us. Although yesterday I was uh, in South Carolina, so I beat I, I Irma out oh. of South Carolina. Um, but I was cool. My husband, he wasn't, but I was. Um, <laughs> All right, uh, Dr. Lolly. So, uh, <laughs> but what you answer their questions. The other thing you want to do is, and this is for anything, you want to have a safety plan at, in your house so kids know if this happens, this is where we all meet up. If you need to establish, and this, these are the kinds of things we try to teach families in pediatrics. Where do you go? Where does everybody go out of the house if the house catches on fire? And practice that. Uh, if you went to college, you did uh, fire drills. If you went to school, you did fire drills because everybody knew where to go. If you go on a cruise ship, they tell you how to get to where you have to go if you want to get off the boat. So it's okay to practice those things. Kids feel more comfortable if they know that there's a plan. And Dr. Lolly, what are the, the signs that kids might be struggling, having anxiety or fear of images they see of, for instance, all of the hurricane damage? Well, they can become clingy. They can become sad. Some of them can act out. There can be problems with sleep. It really kind of depends upon the age of the child. A child under four really doesn't really, probably doesn't understand what's going on. And I know I shouldn't say this on TV, but you know, it's okay to turn off the TV, parents. Um, mm -hmm. You can't continue to be bombarded and not internalize it. So it's okay to just let that go, drop in a video or something. Uh, to take the kid's mind away from that. But having a plan really reassures kids that they know. And there are a couple of, of uh, uh, links that we'd like to give you. If you go to uh, Rainbow's uh, Facebook page, which is um, Facebook uh, UH Rainbow Babies, we have a couple of things. There's a nice thing from FEMA about just stuff to have on hand in case there's an emergency. And kids, if they know that that's going on, if they know that, you know, there's a place to meet, if they know that there's going to be uh, certain things in your box that you have that you keep, and, and this tells you some very simple things to just make sure that you have for any kind of emergency. And then there's another one from the Academy of Pediatrics that talks about how to deal with this and how to talk to your children. Now, let's, let's sort of flash forward or flash back maybe to some of those parents who were in the path of Irma or maybe even Harvey in those cases. If they had the opportunity to get out, yet maybe decided, okay, I'm, you know, I can ride this thing out, should there be special concern taken for the kids and knowing that, I mean, maybe there wasn't going to be that much flood damage or something, but a howling wind for 24 hours might be a little much for those kids too. Yeah, it's very scary. And, but we also have to understand, because I've had people say to me, well, I know people there and they're not leaving. You have to understand that to be able to leave, you have to have a car that sure. will run and will get you to where you have to go. You have to be able to buy gas. You may, if you don't have a place that you're heading for, a family member somewhere farther away, you've got to be able to pay for a hotel and food. So, you know, everybody can't leave. It's, it's sad to say, but everybody right. can't leave. Hopefully, as many people as possible went into shelters. And what we've seen is people are taking this seriously because now with Irma, the shelters are very, very full. And I think people with what happened with Harvey, they said, okay, I, I really do need to go and be somewhere safe. You also have to realize that in the South, most of the houses don't have basements. I grew mm -hmm. up in Southwestern Ohio. Right. I grew up in Tornado Alley. We went to the yeah. basement. 
We went to the basement, we went to the corner, we had a uh, radio down there that had batteries in it, we had a flashlight, and so we were prepared. But a lot of people in the way of hurricanes don't have any place to go. Yeah, yeah Dr. Uh, Lolita McDavid, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your insight with us. Thank you. You got it. All right, Dan DeRose.